I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to make this presentation in the actions session of the Biodiversity Genomics 22 conference. Our perspective is from a tiny nation located in the middle of the North Atlantic, some hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest major land masses. The Faroe Islands have presently a little more than 50,000 inhabitants. Our perspective is also a personal perspective from the two present authors, as there is no national or institutional policies that put genomics into the context of biodiversity or vice versa. The Faroe Islands are formally associated with the Kingdom of Denmark but are, in contrast to Denmark, not a member of EU. The main national income comes from the blue part of this map, the ocean, partly catching wild fish, but salmon farming has become very important during the last decades and is still growing. From the big blue part and the small green part of this Faroese map, we can extract two biodiversity and conservation topics where genomics have its applications. The first is a question which people not necessarily think of as connected to biodiversity and conservation genomics, but for us it goes to its core. It is about sustainability in fisheries. Historically, we know of a number of fish stocks that experienced seemingly sudden collapses, where there have been large catches a few years before. Here exemplified with cod from Newfoundland and the Grand Banks, collapsing around 1990, and the Norwegian spring spawning herring, collapsing around 1970. Taking care of subpopulations and genomic diversity is to the advantage for the stocks, for the ecology, for the sustainability of the fisheries and for the economic stability of the nations. The genome sequence comes in as the ultimate foundation for more detailed investigations in each species. There are species that are commercially exploited where we clearly know too little about their biology and their subpopulations. One of these species is the greater silver smelt that we have included as one of our suggested pilot species. The second question is how fish farming affects the local biodiversity and genetic and genomic diversity. This is not only about the visible biodiversity, like fishes and macroflora and macrofauna at the sea bottom, but also about the invisible biodiversity in sediments, changes in plankton societies in the fjord systems, and even bacterial societies. Another question is more linked to basic biology. Faroe Islands are an archipelago that was created by volcanic activities around 55 million years ago, during the separation of the tectonic plates of Europe and Greenland. Faroe Islands were partially covered by its own ice sheet during the last ice age, and most species may have immigrated later. But there are certainly local adaptations that would be interesting to know more about, even for species that immigrated after the last ice age. We know quite little about potential endemic species. We are trying to put biodiversity genomics on the national agenda by the project called Genome Atlas of Faroese Ecology, abbreviated Gene at Fair. At present, we may call Gene at Fair a national project and interest group for this purpose. We have several aims. The first is similar to Urgus mission and vision, 
to get high quality genomes for all eukaryotic organisms in the Faroe Islands and in Faroe's waters. This is a part of concerted efforts taking place globally, and we expect that this will last for some tens of years. The second is to get uh, population genetics for all organisms that are commercially exploited. First of all, for all fish stocks. And this is to improve management of the species and ensure sustainability in the exploitation of them. As a second part of this aim, we of course have organisms that are of specific uh, interest in Faroe's ecology, whether they are endemic or for other reasons. The third aim is an extension of open access. We want these data and other biological information about these species to be available to the public as a large searchable database and information bank in their own Faroese language. Preferably, this should be coupled to citizen science where observational data can be registered directly by the citizens in a national data bank like those that exist in other Nordic countries. And it should also be possible to extract national data from other citizen science projects like the international projects uh, iNaturalist or eBird. This will help us to get a much better and more detailed overview of distribution, population dynamics, seasonal changes, etc. for a lot of species. This may also, hopefully, uh, promote the public interest in biodiversity and conservation. Shortly, at the end, the future directions of our work. Uh, they will be characterized by the key terms national information and international collaboration. In our experience, the simplest part of this is international collaboration. So I will here focus on the national information, something that is strongly needed. At the present, the Gene at Fair interest group has been able to connect it to a few persons in some other key institutions. We do not yet have members from all Faroese key institutions, but we are working on it. Our hope is that several all, all key institutions will become institutional members uh, of the project. And with a common voice from all institutions, it would perhaps be possible to promote Gene at Fair to become a more integrated part of the institutional policies. In the meantime, we must relate on external funding, which is, as you know, not necessarily easy to get. By this, I will say thank you for your attention.